Okay, class. Well, this is our introduction to our course. It's Monday. It's May 23rd, and it's time to start. So this is a new course. It's not an easy course. Don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> I sent that email about uh, earlier, and you can take this course face to face in the fall if you struggle maybe a little bit with your writing skills or with your um, with maybe some online courses. You don't have much experience with those. So it's good to take it in the fall face to face if you can, and uh, don't worry, there are plenty of people in this class, so you, it, it's okay if you transfer out. But anyway, um, it's an accelerated class too, and that's another part of the warning is that it it uh, is normally taught in 15 weeks. We scrunched it down to 10 weeks, and so yeah, uh, there's a lot to do. So I don't say I didn't warn you <laughs> about this course. Anyway, I'm Dr. Frankum, um, and I wanted to introduce this course and send a video out to you to introduce our first week as well. So that's me. That's my mysterious yet academic-looking picture of myself. Um, although I do need a sweater vest to make my to complete the picture, I suppose, as a professor, right? Anyway, just to talk a little bit about myself, um, my education. I got a an associate degree from Utah Valley University. Uh, that's the UVU there, and then a, a bachelor's degree, in, and the associate degree was in multimedia communication studies. BYU was in uh, media arts studies, a bachelor's degree. Utah State University is the USU there. That was a master's degree in instructional technology, and then at UGA, the University of Georgia, I got a PhD or doctorate in learning design and technology. So the focus really is on how to teach with technology, how to use technology as a teaching and learning tool. And some of my professional experience, for those who haven't had me in your class yet, um, I have worked in many different areas, but starting out I kind of had my career at going at Ameritech College where I helped um, make sure that their computer labs were up to date and computer web servers and things like that. So that's my computer background. And then I worked for the Faculty Assistance Center for Teaching at Utah State University. And there I helped faculty to integrate technology into their teaching and created training and opportunities for faculty to do so. Um, at Brigham Young University of Hawaii, I worked to also do the same thing, help faculty integrate technology and good teaching methods into their teaching at the collegiate level. And then the iSkills project was a project for people with intellectual disabilities, such as autism, and it was a project where we created a YouTube-like website and also a, uh, an app that will allow students to um, navigate their communities a little bit better with some videos that helped them to do that. And now, of course, I work as a professor of educational technology or e-learning at Northern State University. And that's why you have me as your teacher. And then through the years, I've consulted with different organizations, such as the Energy Solutions Arena on training for their guest services, corporate training, um, Texas School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Again, it was about their training of employees and their learning management system, as well as the National Joint Apprenticeship and Training Committee and Green Revolution. And then uh, to talk a little bit about some of my research, which is definitely relevant to this class, um, I've done quite a bit, actually. I, I think I'm probably one of the more active faculty in uh, at Northern State, especially uh, in my department, for doing research. And so here are some publications at my site, sites.google.com, and you can actually access this on the on the homepage for the course as you look at your professor link. Um, anyway, yeah, there's some different things I've written. Um, in most recently, though. Most of the time I'm writing about some theories of learning, effective instruction, what is what is real effective instruction, and how can we bring that into a learning situation. So that's what task-centered learning talks about when I write about that, or task-centered instruction. Um, but more recently, in fact, Dr. Moon, Dr. Wald, and I have created um, a study where we've gone into the May Overby schools with iPads and uh, done reading comprehension activities. We brought some students from northern into the classroom there in a fourth in a fifth grade classroom and helped students to enhance their reading comprehension. And in fact some of the findings from that study are that students gained 
more than they would be expected to gain in one academic year, although this study was only for a couple of months, three months. And so that's a pretty good outcome, I would say, from that study. Although some of the other findings are mixed and so forth, but it is kind of interesting to implement a research study by going into an actual classroom and working with students to see and measuring what the outcome is. And of course, in this class, that's what this class is all about. It's all about designing a research study. It's all about finding what we can find about a certain topic and then designing your own research study about that topic and uh, determining how you can measure the outcomes of that research study. So that's research. And I'm also a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I currently serve as the bishop of our local congregation here in Aberdeen. And uh, it's been a wonderful experience, and uh, we always have a wonderful service each Sunday as we meet together and have an opportunity to share and, and uh, learn. But I respect also your beliefs, and I feel like you ought to be um, comfortable enough in classes and in other situations to share whatever beliefs you have about um, life and about yourself and others. And I also enjoy playing volleyball. That's me up there jumping and hitting the ball. Just kidding, that's not me. I can't jump that high. But uh, I do enjoy playing volleyball. I play on some leagues in the city. I also enjoy soccer, especially when my kids are playing. I like to play around a little bit with them and teach them some skills. And I've coached several different teams of younger kids, mostly. And I like to play guitar. So that's a little bit about me. Here's my family. Um, so on the right is Jacob. And he's my only boy, he's seven. That's, and then next to him is Clara, and she's um, my second oldest. And she is now, oh my goodness, she's already nine. And then Kate is our littlest, and she's four now. And then on the left is Sabrina. She's my oldest, and she's 11. And she's, uh, of course, these kids are all in school. They're, they're going to Simmons Elementary and Simmons Middle School. And there's my wife, Misty, holding Kate again. And uh, we've been married for a long time, 14 years. So a little bit about the course. Um, you really need to take a look at the syllabus and just understand what's in the syllabus as we get started here. So I'm going to take a look at it with you in this video so that we can kind of come to an understanding of what's going on with the course. So the syllabus can be found in our course on D2L. And here's the course homepage. You have the news up here and have some information up here, down here, that's important to read and be aware of. And you can find the syllabus right here under Getting Started. And as I mentioned before, you can read more about me at the Your Professor link. But I'm going to open the syllabus and go through some of the particular elements of the syllabus as we get started. All right, so this is Graduate Research and Design. And, of course, you must be accepted into the graduate program. And it, it's an introduction to methods of research with the intent of training students to become consumers, users, and producers of education research from a perspective of critical objectivity. Students will be exposed to a number of different research methods and strategies utilized in education and related disciplines. And as we look at the textbook there, I hope you already have it because we're kicking, we're hitting the ground running and we're moving forward. You've got to read chapters 1 and 2 by the end of this week and have and take a couple of quizzes on them. Each chapter that you read in the textbook you'll be taking a quiz on. Um, but this class is designed to teach you some research methods and each chapter that you read will also introduce a new research method. Well, not each chapter, but many of the chapters will introduce a new research method that you need to understand in order to be successful in this class. Um, we'll go past the technological things. Let's see. I typically respond within 24 hours on the weekends, it may be longer, for emails, but that's the best way to get me because we do not have office hours over the summer. Um, and so, yeah, that's the way to contact me. Although, I will say that starting next week, I'll be in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and, and not have internet access for a week or two. And so that's going to be a little bit of a difficulty. Again, that's part of the warning for this course. You know, I might not be contactable during that time very well. I'll try to stay in touch as well as I can. And then uh, grading response times within six days after the assignment due date. 
So it's an intensive examination of topics and an emphasis on the word intensive of topics related with research. And so you're responsible for completing all assignments. We have some goals and objectives. Um, objectives are to write a literature review, methods section, results section, discussion section, and a references section using APA style. So you are going to propose your own research study and you are going to write the sections of that research study that you need to write and uh, that will be part of your assignment. And then understanding the research process, including development of hypothesis, selection of research designs, identify distinguishing features of different research designs and the strengths and limitations of each one, read and analyze a variety of print and non-print resources relating to a selected research problem. And in fact, starting next week, you'll be reading um, a bunch of research studies. You're going to be required to read at least three to five each week. Um, of just basic research studies, studies that have been done within an area of interest for you. Oh, there goes my calendar. Hold on. Let's get back to the place where I was. So, um, and then understand, let's see, know the difference between quantum Quantitative and qualitative research design, that will come later. Understand which types of information are provided by descriptive and inferential data analysis methods and understand the assumptions of each. Interpret the results of data analyses and discuss their meaning using APA style. Understand ethical, legal, and diversity considerations in research studies and evaluate the quality of published research. And one of the assignments you'll evaluate a, you'll evaluate a uh, research article for its quality. So those are the objectives for this course. And you use a whole bunch of different methods for this course as well. You're going to read the course textbook, take some quizzes on that, um, read journal articles. There's going to be some discussions. You're going to complete assignments and assessments. And so attendance is not really something, you know, physical attendance is not part of this class. But attendance means that you're submitting your assignments, you're participating in discussion boards, you're active in the class. And like I said, it's squeezed into 10 weeks. If you get behind, I, it's not going to be good. <laughs> you need to stay up on everything. Make sure you finish everything for this week by the end of this week, or you'll get behind, and, and that won't be good for the summer class. It's hard enough even in the in non-summer terms when it's 15 weeks. All right, so you need to have active Participation play an active role in the learning process. As a result, your participation in class discussion threads is required. So on discussions, make sure you read the assigned material, prepare for it, routinely log into the D2L class, and that means pretty much every day. Um, promptness, post thoughts, ideas, comments regularly, and participation. Get actively involved. So when there is a discussion, start early in the week. Post a response, post, and then you have to respond to other students' responses. Make sure you start early in the week so that you can get those done on time for discussions. If there are disabilities and you need accommodations, if you have a disability that you need accommodations for, let, let the uh, Director of Disability Services know, Doris, and you can read the, the rest of these that we go through. Well, let's talk about some of the assignments um, just briefly. You'll have a number of quizzes that you'll take. And there are some resources, and there is a research proposal. So through the class, you'll create different assignments for your research proposal. And these will come up in the class, so you'll know when they're due. You'll have resources. Those are extra activities that you will do that have to do with research. And then you'll have discussions. And they occur on most weeks of the course. I think there are nine total, as it mentions here. As it turns out, research proposal sections are 40% of the grade. Quizzes are 25%. Discussions, 15 And resources are 20 Items in the resources and research proposal sections should be submitted in the appropriate Dropbox in D2L. Everything submitted in D2L in the PDF document format. So you can save any word processing file to a PDF format by choosing Save As and then choosing PDF as the document format. So be aware of that. Submit things into, in the PDF format as we go through. And um, this is the grading policy. So that's how the grades will break down at the end of the semester. All right, well, I'm going to take a little break here because I'm about out of time for what I can record. I only have 15 minutes to record, so I'm going to create another video and share that with you as well this week.